I'm Neil Patterson. Welcome to The Daily. And look, I hope you've got your popcorn handy, because I'm about to take you all on an impossible mission, should you choose to accept it. How to get the punters back into British cinemas. Your days of fighting for the so-called greater good are over. The movie industry has certainly had a tough time of late. Covid, well, that stopped both movie production and trips to the pictures for the best part of the pandemic. The Cineworld chain went bankrupt. And those separate strikes by Hollywood writers and actors are certainly storing up potential problems for the future. But this summer, at least, the silver screen is providing plenty of the feel-good factor. We've just seen the biggest opening weekend at UK cinemas since 2019, Thanks to two films, the feminist fable Barbie. You can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. The choice is now yours. The first one, the high heel. And the story of the father of the atomic bomb, Oppenheimer. They won't fear it. Until they understand it. So is this the turning point? Sit back, relax... Switch those mobile phones to silent and let's find out. Later, I'll be speaking to the head of one of the UK's biggest cinema chains. Our issue is not enough movies. We know the numbers. 36% fewer films released last year. 20% fewer films released this year. But let's start with that record-breaking weekend at the movies. Someone who knows an awful lot about that, Claire Gregory, Sky's Entertainment's correspondent and, of course, host of the Backstage podcast. Good to see you, Claire. Of course, I'm sitting where you usually would sit, in my studio, not your studio. Let's oh, you know, I'm pretty sure that's my studio. <laughs> Get out of there. <laughs> not with this branding. Look, a, a lot to talk about in terms of, of the summer blockbusters themselves. But before this season rolled round, what's your appraisal? How would you have quantified the success or otherwise of UK cinema, cinema in general, in fact. It's been a bit of a tricky year so far, really. There's been some disappointments along the way. Um, Usually big franchises like Marvel and DC would be hoping to be making much more from the films they've been putting out. So things like Ant-Man, Quantumania was somewhat disappointing. Even Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which did very well at the cinema, it didn't get past that magical kind of billion dollar box office, which is what franchises are really hoping for when they spend an awful lot on movies and marketing. That's the magic number that they want to hit. And we did see Avatar, for example, doing that last winter. Winter. But this year, it's been a lot harder. In fact, the only movie that's managed to do that so far this year is the Super Mario Brothers movie, uh, which I would argue, you know, it sort of hits two audiences, really. You've got the grown-ups that remember playing it back in their day, and then, of course, their children who are still playing it today. So that film did really well, despite being kind of critically panned. But other things have really been struggling this year. And as a result of that, we've seen the problems that the businesses have got into with Empire um, and Cineworld both in big, big trouble, Empire, of course, collapsing just earlier this month. Let's look at what is on offer at the moment then. I mean, we have in the cinemas at the moment two, perhaps even three of of, of the biggest films that we will see this year. And they, they all have a slightly different feel to them, I think it's fair to say. It's really remarkable because you look at these films and on paper, an exec, a film exec would look at these films and say, surely Mission Impossible, that's got to be the winner. It's an existing franchise. Tom Cruise absolutely smashed the box office last year with Top Gun Maverick. Surely this is the one that's going to get people into cinemas. And actually... That's been slightly underperforming. Don't get me wrong, it has been taking lots of money, but it really needed to take loads of money because it costs so much to make being made during the pandemic. And then you look at Barbie. I mean, on paper, perhaps the one that would get least people into the cinema because it's by a female director. Those traditionally don't tend to get loads of uh, bums on seats in cinemas. It's about a doll again. Potentially people might be put off by the idea of this. But actually, no, it's been this absolute huge success, undeniable, and uh, and has really kind of arguably saved cinema this summer, along with its counterpart Oppenheimer, which is also really outdoing all expectations. I'm just wondering, if you look at the films that haven't, you know, Indiana Jones, there is a series with a main character and, uh, you know, and an awful lot of affection for an absolute pedigree and, and presumably lots of people who would want to go and see another film. Mission Impossible, the same. It is these two films that have come out, let's be fair about it, they've come entirely out of left field that are dominating the box office at the moment. And I'm just trying to work out why that might be. 
it might be a bit of fatigue for these kind of sequels and franchise movies. People do want original ideas if it's done really well. And actually, you know, the Greta Gerwig factor, the the writer, the director behind Barbie, she's an extremely accomplished filmmaker. And Lady Bird, one of her first movies, was Oscar nominated. That's that's you know, that's really impressive stuff. And Nolan's Oppenheimer, again, you can't rule out Nolan. The the what he does with cinema and what he's done with this as a kind of passion piece, really, is something very special. But I think what is behind it is this kind of double bill this kind of pitting them against one another or putting them hand in hand with one another. But the way it's captured people's imaginations and this kind of pairing of them has really got cinema audiences excited. They're really into it. They love the idea of seeing both, if not together on the same day, then then just at some point to compare them. And that's something that hasn't happened with these other big kind of franchise movies. In fact, people are thinking, oh, I'll just wait because... Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, it's going to cost me a lot of money to take the family to see that. But I could just wait a couple of months and I know it's going to turn up on Disney+. And that's a big problem for studios who are putting their content very quickly onto their streamers. Yes, they're getting their streaming audience, but potentially losing their cinema audience. Barbenheimer, the buzz around that has, has clearly pleased cinema goers. I suspect it's also been pleasing the, the, the cinema chains themselves. I mean, things have not been great domestically in the UK cinema industry. It's been a really hard time for the UK cinema industry. Empire, only just earlier this month, closed the doors of many of its cinemas. Cineworlds had the administrators in and waiting to sort of see how that unfolds. It's too early to say yet what the future of Cineworld is. So it's been a tricky time and it's really a demonstration of just how strange the time it is that, you know, in the same few weeks that a chain collapses, we have the best opening weekend of not just the year, in fact, of years. I think since 2019, we've not seen an opening weekend like this in the UK. So it really does show that there is appetite there. People want to go to the cinema. They want to see films, but it's got to be the right proposition for them. They're not going to turn up just for anything anymore. What does it say, though, about the, the the state of British cinema, state of the UK cinema industry, that that ultimately we are seeing cinemas essentially being being helped through to the Christmas season by the blockbusters, but also by the bad weather to an extent, I suspect. I mean, they cannot rely on this in the long term. No, they can't. There's always been this kind of summer blockbuster place for movies to go. And we know that more movies are coming out towards the end of this year that we can look forward to because there are all those awards baity movies. There's going to be a new one with Joaquin Phoenix playing Napoleon. We've got the latest from Martin Scorsese coming later this year. But beyond that, yeah, there are going to be problems. And we know that because the writers and the actors are striking in Hollywood. Mm. Productions have shut down and we are going to see a huge impact from that. And the cinemas are going to feel that impact. A friend of mine works in VFX and in Hollywood and is now kind of sitting twiddling her thumbs. There are an awful lot of people, not just the actors, not just the writers, who are affected by those strikes. What what does this mean then for the kind of the, the calendar of films that are coming out? Does it just mean that everything gets slightly shunted back? Are there going to be quiet months in cin- in the cinema come October, November? Very much like during the pandemic, people will have to go and get other work and get other jobs and they might not return to the industry. It's really tricky if you're working, as you say, in VFX or in hair and makeup or in catering. And, you you know, previously all your work's been for the studios, which all the films and TV shows have all shut down while while they renegotiate. But we won't see that impact straight away because of the way production schedules work. So, for example, we know that Wicked, the movie which has been shooting in the UK, that had to shut down with just, I think, a few days of filming left to go, the director said. But he said it's still on course to come out December 2024. So I think we'll see films still coming out as planned over the next year, over the next 18 months. And then we'll start seeing much more of an effect in terms of the movie industry. TV shows, we're already going to start seeing that effect. But the movie industry will have enough just to keep popping things out, whether it's enough to keep the cinemas going, that we have to remain to be seen because they need movies, exciting movies, to get people to come and watch them. Thanks, Claire. But what of the cinema operators themselves? Is this summer truly the turning point or will the strikes see bums on seats dwindling once again? All that in a moment.
Regular listeners will know that I am something of a traditionalist. I like my literature in the form of books made of paper and ink, not some screen in which I have to tippy-tap through the chapters. I like my coffee made fresh by a man in slightly too tight trousers, not from a pod placed in a machine. Give him hell, Indiana Jones! I like my movies on a big screen, surrounded by other movie aficionados, not me and my sofa watching my telly. So the travails of the cinema industry have weighed pretty heavily on me and many other moviegoers. Cinemas have been closed. Chains have come close to and even entered administration. But the Barbenheimer effect does seem to have secured cinema's future, for the short term at least. Well, let's speak to Tim Richards, Chief Executive and Founder of View International. How's the summer going? It's been an amazing summer. I mean, we've had a, an incredible selection of movies. Guardians of the Galaxy, Mission Impossible... Indiana Jones, and then this weekend with the absolutely phenomenal Barbie and Oppenheimer, the, the affectionately called Barbenheimer. We knew it was going to be big. Um, the advance bookings that we had for the movies were the biggest since Avengers Endgame. But what was really amazing is 23% of our customers booked to see both movies at the same time. I don't think anyone saw that coming. I mean, the pink of Barbie and, and the kind of incredible, but somewhat little bit bleak landscape of Oppenheimer, two very different movies, but they just worked together really well and they were very effectively marketed. We need to remember, these are from two different studios too. Mm. I and mean, you've got Warner Brothers releasing Barbie and Universal releasing Oppenheimer. And it was really through social media that the term Barbenheimer came out. And it just really goes to show that when the movies are out there, our customers are desperate to come out and be entertained on a big screen. Our customers never left us during the pandemic and after the pandemic. Um, they, we just didn't have any movies for them to see. And now that they're back, our customers are back with us. Do you sense then, given that there are a number of other big movies in the pipeline all the way up to Christmas, that the cinema industry here in the United Kingdom has, 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 has turned a corner somewhat? I think it's fair to say the recovery of the industry has taken a year longer than anyone expected, potentially even two years longer than anyone expected. We're still significantly down to um, before pre-pandemic run rates. And that's now going on four years. I mean, it's extraordinary how much time we've lost. But what we have proven since the pandemic and the post-pandemic period is when the movies come out, whether they be a black and white film like Belfast, an adult comedy like Ticket to Paradise, um, or action films like Top Gun and Avatar, you know, they've all broken records. And, you know, our issue is a supply issue our issue is not enough movies. Uh, we know the numbers, 36% fewer films released last year, 20% fewer films released this year. The writers' strike and, and of course, now the, the, the actors' strike, that does mean that there will be fewer movies coming through the pipeline. So I suppose the UK cinema industry not quite out of the darkness entirely yet. No, we're not, we're not out. And, and the strikes were very unfortunate uh, to, from a timing perspective. Um, the Writers Guild were on strike for 100 days the last time, and we didn't really feel it because the studios managed the releases of their films. This time feels a little bit different, that if it goes for a longer period of time, then it might feel the impact of it. The actor strike, uh, SAG-AFTRA, it's different. I mean, that's been 40 years since their last strike and 60 years since both the writers and SAG-AFTRA were on strike together. It's been a long, long time and the stakes are high. And, you know, we are hoping that because the stakes are so high that there will be a, a quick resolution on it. You are operating, not just in a competitive uh, environment because of the cost of living crisis, but you're operating in the world of streaming services, of video on demand and, and so on and so forth. And if you want people to be going to the cinema in 20 years from now, you really want them to be going to the cinema regularly right now. Streaming services had their day in the sun, and that's come and gone. And uh, I think during the pandemic, during that kind of two or three years that we all went through, where there were no movies, there were cinemas were actually closed for a lengthy period of time. Our customers love movies. We all love movies. And because they had no choice, they turned on to the subscription services, which by themselves are not inexpensive either, but they're watching those at home. 
and you watch a great movie at home when the kids are out and you get an Amazon delivery and you get neighbors and people calling and, and 18, 20 different distractions, it's not the same experience. There is no aspiring filmmaker on either side of the camera who grows up dreaming of putting their movie onto Netflix or a small screen. They want to see people enjoy their movie in the biggest screen they possibly can, people laughing, crying, whatever that emotion might be. It's so much more powerful when it's shared socially. If I'm heading to the cinema this weekend, it's a toss-up. One of the two, Barbie or Oppenheimer, what do you recommend? I go for Barbenheimer. <laughs> Twice the cash in your pocket, isn't, isn't it, Tim? Um, Tim Richards, lovely to talk to you. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. And just a final thought from you, Claire. We have, of course, been focusing on the domestic cinema industry. I'm, I'm wondering if we might have a quick think about what's happening with domestic film production as well. The problems that Hollywood is experiencing, well, I'm sure they're also being felt here, and it is a big contributor to our economies these days, well, or, or at least it used to be. The unions that have gone on strike in the US, the Writers Guild Union and SAG-AFTRA, the Actors Union, a lot of our big stars will be members of those. And that's why we will have seen all the promo for Barbie and for Oppenheimer shut down overnight. The strike was announced and people like Margot Robbie and Killian Murphy and Emily Blunt talked before the strike was announced about how they were members of SAG-AFTRA and they'd have to stop working. Now, not everyone over here in the UK is going to be members of those US unions. So, it, this is a good opportunity for rising talent and for those that can work and without crossing any picket lines to kind of be seen, to get work out there, to get work made, because there is appetite to fill those TV schedules. There are going to be holes to be filled. OK, Claire, the most important question of our discussion, Barbie or Oppenheimer? I'm not paying for both. <laughs> I have to say, I, I'm a big Nolan fan anyway, but Oppenheimer really is a masterpiece. Oh, thank it goodness for that. Long. I thought I was going to have to go and see Barbie. <laughs> and that is your lot for today. My thanks to Tim Richards and Claire Gregory. And you can hear Claire speaking to Barbie herself, Margot Robbie, and the man behind Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan, on the Backstage podcast, available wherever you find this one. We'll see you tomorrow.